This week on Dine Drinkly, the podcast. James Gunn, Superman movie was just filming here in the downtown Cleveland area. So while they were here, of course, they checked out so many really great places that we know and love. And some of those places include Marble Room. Makes sense. But while you're sitting there, you're literally eating and drinking in a flower shop and they sell everything by the stem. So, so a functional beverage has an additive which could be a probiotic, which might make your stomach, your digestion better. It might have CBD. I'm Josh Duke. And I'm Alex Darris. And you're either watching or listening to Dine Drinkly, the podcast, where each and every week we are going to be joined by Cleveland.com's best and brightest food experts, insiders, and influencers talking all things food and drink here in the Northeast Ohio area. What are we talking about today, Alex? Well, you have a lot of exciting <laughs> things to talk about. Uh, you were covering the Superman filming downtown, and the cast and crew went to a few notable Cleveland restaurants we're going to discuss. We're also going to talk about In the Weeds, which is a flower shop slash restaurant concept and functional beverages, so alcohol alternatives. So. Yeah. Well, just to get us started real quick, if you haven't been paying attention... Uh, James Gunn Superman movie was just filming here in the downtown Cleveland area. So while they were here, of course, you know, this is a pretty good foodie scene here in Cleveland, as we know here on Dine Drink Cleveland podcast. So, of course, they checked out so many really great places that we know and love, and they shouted them out on their, their social media. Yeah, James feeds. Gunn specifically yeah. shouted out. Yeah, um, the, the director, James Gunn, he was very, very adamant about the places he ate at. Some of those places include Marble Room. Makes like, sense. We talked about here as being a pretty good place I feel like Drake went to Marble Room like yeah. a lot of the celebrities go I mean it's like yeah. makes sense yeah and Mabel's BBQ was another place that they frequented it sounds like according to the manager there they had repeat visits there so that was another oh. one they really loved and and East 4th pretty central I guess for all the locations they were going to yeah yeah I mean you can't really go wrong with that so uh, I'm not surprised okay. <laughs> Lionheart Coffee was another one that they went to. And I know James Gunn seemed to really enjoy that one. He posted about it. And I guess they gave him a souvenir from Cleveland. They gave him a thermal coffee sleeve with uh, Superman or the Man of Steel drawn on it. So that was really cute. Uh, James Gunn seemed to really appreciate that one. He also visited Rising Star Coffee. I know I know he posted about that one on one of the first dates of them filming in the Superior Avenue um, street, but all it's these... a lot of filming days, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of long filming days drinking yeah. coffee too. And so. I'm sure there's so 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 many people or so many restaurants on their list of places that they checked out that we don't really have you know tracked or, or whatever. But I'm sure there are plenty of people in Cleveland with stories about celebrities like uh, the person playing Superman, David Corinsweat, just like eating at their restaurant you know? yeah that's what because pete chikarian wrote the story about mm -hmm. the the restaurants and i like that he mentioned that it wasn't just like the crew and the behind the, which is really cool but it was like james gunn and the main actors were going out to eat they weren't just sitting in hotel rooms getting room service it's kind of cool yeah and reportedly they spent about 37 million dollars here in cleveland between like not just restaurants and stuff but the production hiring local people to help you know run the scenes for them so it was really nice to have that sort of economy boost and i'm sure a lot of these restaurants were benefiting from that as well yeah and we're not really getting but josh was uh <laughs> Playing paparazzi, covering uh, the Superman thing. And mm -hmm. those were long days. What were you eating? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, mostly, I didn't eat, to be totally I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, it was so busy, and it was so, like, I was a lot of the times out, out in the hot sun. So, it really, I just didn't have time to really think about food. Yeah. So, honestly, yeah, no. But it, it, was, it was really nice to see all these big stars in Cleveland and the sort of the behind-the-scenes production. And uh, I had a little run-ins with the security people who didn't really like me filming and recording and all that but it, it was it was still a really really awesome experience at the end of the day and you can tell that at least james gunn uh the, the city left a really positive impression on, on us he left us a really glowing review on threads mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna just read a quote from that yeah i think it speaks to a little bit of um sort of that midwestern hospitality i think we got going on here he said on threads every city would be so lucky to have people that love their city as much as you do you simply couldn't have been more wonderful kind or accommodating to me and our performers and crew 
Thank you a thousand times over for being our friends and partners on this film. So much love to you all. So, yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to put it. I mean, I feel like that's how we Clevelanders feel about us and how we view the city. But yeah. it's nice to see, especially someone so huge who probably travels all over the world. Like, it's yeah. it, appreciating his time in Cleveland, too. Yeah. And on that note, since he is posting this publicly on his, to his probably hundreds of thousands of followers i didn't check his follower account but you know his his extensive following that's national probably international since he's dealing with a big giant property like this you can see people responding to his photos at marvel room and him posting a photo of their giant cotton candy tower that has a superman logo stamped in it you know mm -hmm. you can see them wonder like wonder oh I, like oh that sounds really cool that looks really nice and so these are probably going to be places that are on their mind or it puts cleveland on their mind as a foodie destination if they if it wasn't there in the first place so. well and like yeah in general you hear people i'm sure like they film in new york and la all the time even we in the midwest we i feel like a foodie person knows restaurant names of in these big cities so it's kind of like yeah give us a shout out too we're doing really cool mm -hmm. culinary things here as well obviously as we know but yeah and even the places that they didn't necessarily eat at or frequent that we know of it was cool to see them sort of transform those storefronts those restaurants oh yeah fronts, i forgot about that yeah into scenes or places from metropolis so for example one place that they filmed that was on superior avenue and at the at intersection of superior and east is guys pizza and they they transformed that they removed the sign for guys pizza and they put something called like hubs bay pizza or something like that and uh it was funny because while there was a, a period of time between them putting that sign up there and them actually filming it and going away that guys literally need to like put a banner over the fake sign to let people know that yeah. it's, still, it's still guys guys you know so it's stuff like that so many stories like that where storefronts restaurants you might see um are actually from cleveland i know at least one where they filmed inside the restaurant it was in slavic village so outside of the downtown area but there was a, a restaurant called red chimney restaurant mm -hmm. very like um slavic, old school old school like diner i know they filmed at least one scene there with the guy playing green lancer nathan fillion so that'll be exciting yeah, if you, exactly if you've been there before seeing them you know, if you've been there and experienced that place before, I've seen it on the big screen is going to be kind of really cool. Yeah, no, for sure. And now it's like, I don't know, I want to go see the movie and just see where all the places we can spot from our hometown. Yeah. So, And they stayed at hotel. A lot of them stayed at Hotel Cleveland, at least during a period of time. I personally got a chance to talk to a bartender at the Maker, the new like bar yeah. on the, the lobby of Hotel Cleveland. And he was kind of glowing about how they just were casually coming down there and eating and talking about their production and, and all that. So it was like kind of kind of interesting. And there's going to be so many Clevelanders with stories like this at different places. So. Yeah, it's just like like I said, it's the big cities all, always happen, things like this. And it's maybe not as big of a deal, but it's very cool to see how Cleveland fully embraced it in all senses, even in the food and drink scene. So Yeah, and a lot of that's in large part. I think due to the eleven million dollar tax credit that we ha we I think Ohio gave to the production, so um, stuff like that kind of attracts things like this. So I guess keep it up, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking about just cool, innovative restaurant concepts, there's this restaurant bar called In the Weeds in North Royalton, and it's half restaurant and bar, half floral shop so it's actually been open since i think the end of 2021 but it's just like really cool like i was talking to the owner jordan slozar and she was saying i was like have you seen anything like this in in other cities and she was like the only thing i've seen similar is like cafes in europe that will do like breakfast and you could buy a bouquet of flowers mm -hmm. but while you're sitting there you're literally eating and drinking in a flower shop and they sell everything by the stem so she kind of talked about her idea was guy stops for a beer after work, stays a little too long, buys flowers for his wife to apologize coming home. And it's like, you could do it all in one stop here. But it's very cool. Uh, they have a lot of like events too, where I, I think a monthly event where you can go and sip champagne and they'll teach you how to make like full centerpieces. But mm. even the food and drink side is so just innovative like they have 16 different cocktails at any time a lot of them have like flower 
flavors and florals and stuff. And it just looks like this place that's like in a strip mall in the suburbs, but you go in and it's, first of all, it's huge. And it's like a garden oasis. Like they have a full back patio mm. thing. It's very much like, I don't know, it's it, it's a very cool concept. And especially to have it, I know we talked last week about West Siders and uh, Jordan kind of said the same thing is she wanted to bring something that could fit downtown, but into the suburbs. And I think it's just cool we're seeing stuff like that. Yeah, that's really, really cool. It, it sounds like if it's a floral shop and you can get some flowers here, it might have like a really cool aesthetic too. Like, where Oh, it's so cool yeah. inside. Yeah, it feels like you're in like a woodsy, mm -hmm. like it's very like feminine, but not mm -hmm. like, oh, like guys can't like whatever. Like it's just so like woodsy, cute flowers everywhere. Mm -hmm. She has a little gift shop with different like home goods and stuff you you mentioned about how like the 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 he can the guy <laughs> can stay over for some beers and bring some flowers back to his his partner maybe the partner's there and and the 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 thing is there she's or they are handling the flowers and and all obsessed with that and he's obsessed with the drinking. Well, exactly. Yeah. And what's cool too is like the staff there, there's not like a floral staff mm -hmm. and a kitchen staff. Like the the floral part is open all the same hours as the kitchen. So you can buy a bouquet at nine o'clock at night, which you really can't do like most mm -hmm. places. But like the servers, they also work the flower shop. So they'll be serving you your meal and then they'll wrap up your bouquet before you leave. So it's kind of mm -hmm. cool like... Even from the working side, like I feel like a lot of people, if you've worked in the restaurant industry, serving, it gets repetitive. It's the same thing. But there it's like you kind of have these two jobs. And she worked um, previously. She would work mornings at a floral shop and then clock into a restaurant gig at night. So that's kind of how she got the idea to bring both. Actually, that that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So I would imagine a place like this ha would might might have an emphasis on like fresh ingredients. Oh yeah, you know? fully. Like they, they source a lot of local stuff. I think like the majority of their meat is local. Their produce is local. It's all seasonal. But what's also cool is in the spring and summer, they will try to source some local flowers too. Because obviously like, mm -hmm. I don't know, the the normal florist shop, they get flowers from all over the world. But yeah, they try to bring some of that local part into it. And yeah, it seems like the place where you can go and kind of, you could always go and get the same chicken piccata and old fashioned if that's your mm. thing, or you could go and like try something different every time, so. Yeah, I bet their cocktails are really good too because I know whenever I get like lavender infused, you know, I I'm just thinking of other cocktails that might have like a, a flowery theme yeah. to it and they'll give you that as a garnish too. And some of them are edible, but mm -hmm. probably not. not no, there's edible flowers. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they're not bad. Um, mm. I know we've r reported before the chef's garden. Uh, they do a lot of cool they grow produce for chefs, but they have edible flowers there. And I actually got some and put some on my friend's birthday cake. And oh, it was really cute. That is cute. That's and it kind of awesome. just tastes like a little like it's, not, it's floral, <laughs> like it's a floral flavor. <laughs> nice and green and fresh and, and delicious. Do you think you trust yourself in making a bouquet? Do you think you would make a cute bouquet? Well, actually, you know what? You yes, just pick each stem and yes, I would because I think that I have a good eye for stuff like that. But I would have no idea what flower is what or <laughs> what the conventions is. But I think I would, I would, I think I would make a really banging bouquet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they do a lot of private events too, and I was like, that would be a fun like, like a corporate event or like mm -hmm. a birthday party, something. Go with your friends, eat, yeah. drink, and make little flowers yeah, things. Like a yeah, that actually does sound fun. Like a. Not like a paint and scent, but you know. Yeah, similar yeah, concept. Similar. And now we're joined by Paris Wolf, who's going to talk a little bit about Verbena, the non-alcoholic bar celebrating its one year anniversary. So hi, Paris. Hi, Alex. Hi, Josh. Hey. So Verbena, we've talked a little bit about it before, but one thing I know that you have recently dove into is their functional drinks. So what is a functional drink. Okay. Verbena is meant to be free spirited, no alcohol beverages. And last year when Molly started it, she started it as a mocktail bar thinking that's what people were going to be ordering the most of, which are cocktails or non-alcoholic beverages that mimic cocktails. Yeah. And she, when I talked to her recently, she said that instead she's seeing a lot of interest in functional beverages. People want who aren't drinking alcohol still want some kind of 
value, added value like to it. Like a feeling. Mm. A feeling, yeah. So a functional beverage has an additive which can be a probiotic, which might make your stomach, your digestion better. It might have CBD for re- relaxation. It, everybody's familiar with caffeine for energy. It mm-hmm. might have um, legal mushrooms for mental clarity. Um, there's a lot of different herbs and vitamins and probiotics and amino acids mm-hmm. that are added now to beverages. Yeah. And what are these like drinks? Is it like all different kinds of drinks or what? Are, how do people consume these functional uh, ingredients in drinks? Uh, that's I, a good question. Yeah. What she offers are some ready to drink cans and you can just buy something that's already formulated to put you to sleep or make you have energy or make you more social. But you can also order, when I was there, she had three different functional cocktails, which are made with, be just like a spirit comes in a 750 mil bottle. It would be a product that comes like that and they mix it as part of a a beverage. I don't know if I've called it a cocktail or a mocktail. I think it's still a mocktail, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, no, yeah, I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you would call it, but. We need a different name. We, we do. do. Yeah, Rhymes with do. cocktail, mocktail. Yeah, mocktail with a twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were, I tried one of them and it was very good. Mm-hmm. It had like the different flavors you taste in a mocktail, but it was supposed to give you energy, which I don't need. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it was very good. Yeah. Okay. So what, how different is this from like, okay, if I want something that gives me energy from what you're describing this, this this drink in like a, a energy drink, you know. Yeah, like a caffeine monster. is a functional additive. Interesting. There so are... you, you can call it a coffee a functional drink. Yeah, a functional you... beverage. Oh, there's but a function. There... It's a drink, and it's serving a function. Interesting. So there's a. There what... oh. are other energizing <laughs> herbs that will give you less of a buzz, a little smoother, mm-hmm. a little calmer energy. Yeah, because yeah, it's like these ingredients. They can be from herbs, like mushrooms. You said, like, kind of different. Yeah, people Components. might already be familiar with kava, yeah. which is a um, South Pacific root that is made into tea, and mm-hmm. it can make you a little calmer, a little more social, a little euphoric, depending. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the stronger ones because some of them I don't think are real obvious in their benefits. Yeah, like Caffeine's mm-hmm. obvious, but maybe ashwagandha might not be quite so obvious. Mm. Yeah, or like over time you notice something. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah I was but say. like kava's pretty obvious as well. Yeah. And why do you think like, I don't know, did Molly have any insight on why people are drinking? They or seem to be drinking these more now than ever. It's something that seems more popular with um, younger generations. And they're choosing not maybe to do alcohol. And then if they're choosing not to do any other drugs or substances uh, substances that affect your moods and and performance, they um, still everybody still wants to party, hang out, do stuff. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a a way to be social, a place to be social. Yeah, I think it's just like the mocktail situation that we've talked about. where People just want something to hold in and still feel included in all that and maybe still feel like at least even the taste of 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 an alcohol even if it's not really alcohol. I but had I had a also- friend, I got a kit in the mail and I had a friend who quit drinking and he said, I'm not going for the mocktail thing. I'm not going to like it. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. I still have to test this. Mm-hmm. So um, he tested it as well and said, mm, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and I think like to kind of going off what you were saying with the mocktails is sometimes people are like, okay, I want to go out, I want to have a drink, but I don't want to pay X amount of dollars for something that's literally just a drink when I could have a water. But it seems like this is kind of in between where it's like you can feel a little something, like especially with kava, it's you feel something, but you're not getting drunk, but you're also not just drinking maybe a mixture of different juices, juices and stuff right. like that. And, it, and obviously there's probably health benefits to that, to drinking these things as opposed to alcohol which has a a lot of side i wouldn't call them side effects no alcohol is bad for you (laughs) we talk about it all the time we love it but like yeah no it's not good like (laughs) and some of these do have beneficial effects well yeah like probiotics these people say yeah they do have beneficial health effects Mm -hmm. Uh, and if they don't have beneficial that are really measurable at least they don't have negative health effects yeah. And it has become, I was um, looking through some data and 
the market has doubled, has gone up 50% in the last four years for functional beverages. Wow. Because you can buy a lot of them over the grocery counter. Yeah. Um, but Molly carries things that are less common, mm -hmm. um, a little bit higher end, and um, very interesting. Yeah, no, it is really interesting. I know this has got to be another thing that has to have come from like California or something like that because it just it doesn't it doesn't it feel like such a California thing to be drinking Southern California yeah, Northern yeah. East Coast yeah we're rebranding yeah. coffee to a functional beverage <laughs> yeah. yes we are but um as far as like flavor profiles is it kind of like you can get whatever your taste is in a functional like what you know I've seen Molly work a lot with lavender Ooh. in some of the beverages um, because if you use a pea flower and you get a little purple color it's very attractive and appealing um, I've seen some that are that are much more similar to maybe a citrus drink that you would have um, so some of them are similar some of them are a little different yeah and does verbena have food at all yes yes they do. do they incorporate any of these functional ingredients <laughs> to have like an Not edible Not yet, effect. we might tell Molly that. That's uh, actually a good idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm filled with great ideas for these places, Alex. Yes. But there's probably good reasons why Just they steal don't them them. from him. <laughs> He's giving them away for free. So yeah, but so very exciting that Verbena one year anniversary, I think it's a really cool concept of a spirited free bar. And especially in Cleveland, cause I think Molly's talked about that it is a thing on the, the coast, but maybe not as much in the middle of the country. And I think it just shows like she's made it to a year. It's very popular community space and there's a market for it. There is, it is, you did mention a good thing. It is a community space. She does do a lot of activities, events, mm -hmm. tarot card readings, very popular. Yeah, book clubs um, book and clubs stuff. And such, yeah. and such. But um, I think one year is a good sign. That it's going to keep going. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to or watching Dine Drinkly, the podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Dine Drinkly. And make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at cleveland.com slash newsletters.